at East High School, after school, um, and possibly during some of the lunch time. So keep your eyes and ears open, all right? Um, now the FAFSA, FAFSA is not available until after January 1st of your senior year, okay? So after January 1st of your senior year, that's when you fill out the FAFSA. You fill out the FAFSA using your family tax forms. So again, we can't stress how important it is to, you know, to try and get all your tax information together beforehand, right, right around January, so that in February, when you do the FAFSA, you have all your tax information, we could just breeze through it and get it done, all right? It just makes the whole process a lot easier. All right, so again, we already applied to the schools over here. We have A, B, and C. The next step is filling out the FAFSA. The FAFSA, you can fill it out in February, no problem. You're using the tax forms to fill it out. And once you fill out the FAFSA, you enter, and the reason why they need the tax forms is actually um, you enter uh, your family financial information. And what FAFSA determines is this calculation. Uh, it's this magic number. It's called the expected family contribution, your EFC, all right? Now, your EFC is just kind of a, a number that, that, that helps FAFSA pretty much figure out and determine um, how much financial aid you could be eligible for. Um, it's not literal, you know, in terms of expected family contribution. It's not like exactly how much your family is expected to contribute or pay for your school. Um, but it's just kind of a, a number that they use. It's a calculation they use, okay? So again, they're going to they're gonna, uh, develop your EFC based off of your FAFSA and off of your family tax information, all right? Now, after you fill out the FAFSA, now what happens, FAFSA processes that information, all that tax information um, comes up with your EFC, and then they develop the, the SAR, the Student Aid Report. Now, we talked about that in the bullet points a little bit earlier, right? So your Student Aid Report um, is, is like a summary of all your FAFSA information, all right? Now, there's a space on the FAFSA where you get a list up to 10 schools that you want your financial aid, your FAFSA information sent to. But for the purposes of this video, right, we only have, we only have three examples, but you can put up to 10 if you want. Um, any more than 10, you have, to, you have to pay a little bit extra per school, all right? So again, for this video, we're gonna put uh, three schools, okay? So what FAFSA does, they process all that information, all your financial information, they send it out um, in the form of a student aid report. Now they're gonna send that to the schools, okay? But they're also going to send it to you. So then you get a copy of that as well. All right, so again, the very first step, we're applying to colleges. You figure out, you find out when you get accepted. Now, the important thing is that if you get this done by Thanksgiving, you already find out by early January uh, what the results are, what schools you've been accepted to. The FAFSA, FAFSA you get done by January, February, possibly even March. You want to get it done uh, the sooner the better, right? It's always the sooner the better. So if you know what schools you're getting, you've already been accepted to in January, you fill out the FAFSA form in February or March, right? Everything is kind of falling in place. You know, the, whole, the, the challenge about this whole process is that um, everything's very much in an order, right? There's a procedure to everything. The step one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, whatever. But you can't do step number seven until you do step number three, right? And if you wait on doing step number three, then everything after that gets delayed as well okay so again we're trying to we're trying to teach you the easy way uh, to get everything done on time um, and finish up everything you need to do okay so again fill out the FAFSA they've developed that student aid report that SAR they send the SAR to the schools they send a copy to you right now after that what happens is that the schools they're the ones that that determine how much financial aid you're going to receive so this includes federal Pell Grants this includes the Stafford loan. Um, all the education, federal education loans are, are actually um, determined by the school. But they're determined by the school based on your FAFSA information, okay? So that's a really important process, really important step, okay? So, kind of comes full circle here. So then you fill out the FAFSA. FAFSA sends the student aid reports to the schools. Schools receive that student aid report, that SAR. Or they receive that FAFSA information, right? They process that information in their financial aid office and after that <clears throat> the school will send you what's called an award letter now based on this award letter this is what's going to contain all the financial aid you know any kind of institution institutional scholarships that the school is going to be offering to you it's going to offer any um, any grants any loans so that's what's going to contain your financial aid package alright so again the school can't send you your financial aid package 
until you've been admitted or unfortunately denied, right? So you have to, again, this is very procedural, right? It's step one, two, three, four, five. You want to make sure you're all in order here. Now what you do, this is the key detail right here. I have this circled in this, in this video because this is where you make the decision as to where you're going to go to school, all right? When you apply to the school, you're simply applying to the school, right? It'd be the equivalent of walking into a store. When you walk into a store, doesn't mean you're going to buy anything in the store, doesn't mean you can afford anything in the store, doesn't mean you even like the store. You're just physically walking into the store. When a school accepts you, right, into their, after you apply, when, once the school accepts you into the college, you're just like walking in the door. Doesn't mean you can afford it, doesn't mean you even like it, doesn't mean that you would want to go there, but then at the same time, maybe it is, right, okay? So again, when you apply, you're simply applying. Where you make the decision is in the financial aid process, in the award letter, because that's the bottom line. You're going to find out exactly how much it's going to cost for you to go to school A, or to school B, or school C. And you're going to be able to compare those side by side and be able to make the, the best decision possible financially, all right? So then once you receive those award letters, now again, there's an important distinction. You have your award letters, and then you have your acceptance letter. Your acceptance letter, simply when you apply to college, you receive your acceptance letter. Simply saying, you've been accepted or you've been denied. After you finish up the FAFSA, and it gets processed by the school, they're going to send you the award letter. The award letter is the money, okay? How much they're going to offer you the money. Once you get those award letters, you literally just put them out on the table and compare them, all right? School A is offering you a certain amount of money. School B is offering you a certain amount of money. School C is going to offer you a certain amount of money, okay? This is where you weigh out all the different pros and cons, and you finally figure out what school you're going to go to. You're actually going to enroll in, okay? So again, school A, maybe school A is an out-of-state school that you really want to go to. But if they're only awarding you a little bit of financial aid and it's going to be really expensive to go there, maybe you can't afford to go there right now at that point, you know? Or you have to pull out student loans or, or pick up an extra summer job or do whatever you need to do to go to that school, right? Maybe school B is an in-state school, a little bit cheaper, right? But maybe not your first choice and school C might be another in-state school that's your first choice that you really like. Um, and maybe they're offering you less, right? So again, you weigh out all the pros and cons, right? You figure out in-state, out-of-state, the size of the school, right? A big school, a little school, um, whether it's an urban school um, or a rural school, so if it's in a big city or if it's kind of out in the countryside, um, east coast, west coast, down south, midwest, in-state, out, all the different things, all the different factors. You weigh out all the different pros and cons, your, your programs, your majors of study, what you actually want to study at the school and if it's a good fit for you. Um, so you figure out all the pros and cons along with your award letters because at that point you know exactly how much it's going to cost you uh, for each one of those schools. So again, this is the bottom line. This is where you make the decision. So as a recap, right, the very first step is that you apply to college. You get all your applications done. Again, hopefully by Thanksgiving. Once you get those done by Thanksgiving, the schools are going to get back to you around December, early January. The next step is that you fill out the FAFSA, right? You fill out the FAFSA form. After the FAFSA, um, they're going to process all your information based on your family tax information. Now, FAFSA is going to send that, that information to the schools that you apply to. Schools receive that information. They process that information, and then they send you an award letter. The award letter contains all the financial aid, the scholarships, everything that they're offering you. It's the bottom line, how much it's going to cost for you to go to that school. Again, you put those out on, on the table, you figure out where you're going to go to school, okay? Again, we thank you very much for uh, tuning in here into room 223, the Future Center view, video. This higher counseling staff is going to present on various topics. So again, make sure you, you tune in and, uh, and check this out, okay? So uh, thank you for your time and stop in room 223, the Future Center. Thank you.